Hey everybody, welcome back to an updated slime fun tutorial with your host Moomer here. We're looking at networks and I'm sure the title of this video caught you off guard and you said, what do you mean cargoless dust farm? How is this possible? Well, we've managed to do it. Now we'll talk about that in a little bit, but we do need to start with changes to network itself. So first and foremost, previously the network monitor was a non-interactable block. You couldn't open it or do anything with it you were able to put storage units essentially on every side as long as it was connected to one other block in the network. So you realistically could put five storage units, one on every side, one on the top, and then attach this to another network component on the bottom to continue to move items, and all five would have filled up. Now, for the sake of server performance, this has now been changed, where while you can place items on five sides, you can only fill one at a time. So if all five sides, except for the top, had a storage unit on it, I would simply select which storage unit based on the direction or vertical, horizontal, you know, up, down, left, right, forward, back, wherever that storage unit was. Whichever one I click on, that's the one that's going to receive the items that are made for that storage unit. If it's just a network cell, well, then anything that can flow in there will flow in there. The network grabber and the network pusher, two new items that Sophie has added. These function similarly to input and output nodes, but also differently. And I don't want to continue to, to make you think this is cargo. It's not. They're going to work completely different. The network grabber, when placed next to a slime fund machine, that's right, a slime fund machine, can actually, like a dust extractor, can actually extract the dust out of there and send that dust into the network to find a storage unit to rest in. Whichever one space it's attached to, whether it's to the west, to the east, north, south, up or down, wherever it is, you're simply going to attach it to it and tell it, okay, if it's north of here, click it north so that you select that dust extractor and it will extract out of there. If I had one to the west or one to the south, I could change and alternate which device that that is pulling from. That will send the items into the network to find a unit to be stored in. So if it's a dust extractor, I'm going to use my infinity expansion storage units and have one for each dust. Now, the difference here is cargo goes from an input node to an output node, never stops anywhere along the way. Here, the items go into the network, but on the next slime fun tick, the network pusher pulls them right back out. So it's just as fast as cargo and a thousand times less demanding on the server performance. A thousand might be a slight exaggeration, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. The network pusher works essentially the same way as the network grabber. It will take whatever item you put in here. So if I want to push network bridges into a certain machine or into a storage unit, I'm sorry, not a storage unit, into a machine, it will, whichever direction that machine is, if it's on the north, again, I click it, and it will push those items into that machine. In other words, allowing you to use things like smelteries, dust extractors, ingot formers, ingot factories, gold pans, dust washers, ore grinders, anything that doesn't have a vanilla interface. We'll talk more about that in a little bit as well. Finally, there's a network purger. Now, it does function similarly to a trash can, but the difference is a trash can can be set up to only accept overflow. If I have an infinity span expansion storage unit or a chest that's full, I divert the excess, or essentially the excess automatically then gets diverted to the trash can through the use of cargo. Here, anything I put into the network purger, if I find any network bridges in my network, it will trash all of them. So you've got to keep that in mind. It is not a trash can. It will remove all those items eventually if it's got enough time. So if you've got 25 million cobble that you want to get rid of, great. Stick some cobblestone in here and let it run for a couple of days. It'll pull your cobble out in a heartbeat. But you do have to be careful that if you put something in here you want to keep on it, you monitor that level so you don't lose more than you want. So let's talk about the system. Absolutely no cargo. Now, could this have been compacted a little bit more? Yes, I could have put a couple of these back to back over here, but I wanted to have all of this going at the same time just for you to see. This alone um, would probably have the potential, let me just get a rough estimate here. 
Uh, in the time the server's been running, I've probably produced 9 million dust inside of a couple of hours, maybe a little bit more. Now, granted, again, my server is on no tick delay, no delays of any kind. It's running full speed. And it doesn't have 5,000 cargo nodes to slow the server down either. So let's look at a real setup here. So right here, we have our network controller. Any other network component, such as a bridge that's attached to it, or the monitors, we can attach all the machines that way. So I have a very small uh, string of bridges down here just to make sure all these different component towers get attached. But as long as there is a direct connection to another network component, they will stay attached and you don't have to put a flood of them down. So how is my network set up? So I currently have the Infinity Expansion cobble gems running. They're running so fast, they're getting pulled out so quickly that half the time, I don't even see any cobble in here. It's coming out that quick. <clears throat> now there is a, I'm gonna say a limitation in the code of slime fun that only lets you pull whatever is in the GUI. In this case, I can only pull out one stack of cobblestone. I have 12 dust or 12 cobblestone generators going and 12 dust extractors. I need to pull 12 stacks. So to do that, I set up 12 storage units with cobblestone. And I let them run for about 10 minutes to get, you know, a few thousand in there as a base, as I didn't want any of them to run out. Because if they did, well, then I've got one that's not sending cobblestone and it's slowing down my system. So I think I started the dust extractor somewhere around 25,000. And you can see what they're all at. They're all at pretty healthy levels. I don't think I have to worry about one running out. So by having 12 of these going, again, the network monitors say, all right, I want you to send anything that hits me to this infinity storage unit, which is storing cobblestone for me, okay? I don't need a cargo output node to say it into a uh, network importer. It's already attached to the network. This connection right here, as long as they're attached somehow to that network manager, They'll keep talking. So now what I'll do is I will use a network pusher to take cobblestone out of the network. It's going to push it into that infinity dust extractor. And sometimes they run so fast you barely get to see it. Then the grabber attached to that infinity dust extractor will pull the dust and put it into the storage unit. And then to go to the ingot formers, we're going to have the same thing. We're going to have a pusher. In this case, it's going to grab aluminum dust, and it's going to push it into my ingot former. And as you can see, as the stack gets in there, I get 32 ingots. And the same thing. My grabber pointed at the infinity ingot former, then brings it over to my storage. Now, I also said earlier that you can use slime fun based GUI. So it, this will not work with chest, vanilla chest, vanilla barrels. Uh, it won't work with vanilla furnaces. Any item that opens in a vanilla GUI is probably not going to work. That would also include the enhanced furnaces, such as the carbonado. However, the electric furnaces will accept smelt and send back into the network. So that means dust extractors, ore washers, smelteries, ingot factories, you name it. If it's a slime fun machine, you can move items in and out pretty much. So same thing as the dust extractors and the ingot factories for my smeltery, I need to use a pusher pushing these items into the smeltery. I have one to grab the tin, one to grab copper ingot, one to grab the copper dust. And then, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> Nice move, Boomer. I'll use my network grabber. Let's see if I can place it back down. And I will have it go to the advanced smeltery to grab out of. And then it will simply pull my bronze ingots out into the network. And then it will send it to the storage unit that I have down here. So I have two units currently making bronze ingots. Because I'm also making aluminum bronze. And I'm making way up there at the top, Corinthian bronze. So here's my smeltery making Corinthian bronze. Like I said, you can have up to five items push in, one pull out. 
So the only ally we currently can't make is reinforced. But as you can see, I have all four items coming in, and then my network grabber down here is grabbing, behind that, is grabbing the Corinthian bronze. And that's pretty much what we've put together so far. So like I said, you could attach all the other machines. If you're in a basic uh, startup of networks and your slime fund system, you're not going to have the infinity expansion stuff. You're going to be using ore grinders and dust pans and gold or gold pans and dust washers. Those will all work in here as well. You can move your flint, your sifted ore, your iron nuggets, your clay balls. All those can go anywhere that you need them within this system. And I tell you, uh, when it comes to the reinforced ingot uh, and talking with Safi earlier today, there is a possibility that he might make a network pusher that can move two items instead of just one. I would imagine to be a slightly more expensive crafting recipe, which I'm totally cool with that because, as you can see, I'm pushing a lot of stuff around. So, hey, I can afford it. I'm good with that. Maybe instead of a, a Damascus steel ingot, it's a hardened ingot, whatever the recipe happens to be. A uh, couple minor changes. The I believe the network uh, bridge did get a recipe change. We'll just pop over that real fast. So you get five bridges now instead of four. And the monitor chain, a no, monitor is still the same. I thought there was one other. Other than that, no, there is one other thing. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to cheat you out of this. So let's go into cheat mode. The uh, network grid, uh, let's just connect to the network here. So the network grid also now has the ability to search for items. So if I click on the filter and I type in dust, I get to see only dust. I love this. This is awesome. Not only can you sort it alphabetically, not only can you sort it by quantity, I can now search for items. And once you right click the filter, that will clear it. So the filter will stay in place until you either clear it, set a new filter, or the server restarts. Once the server restarts, it'll clear back out. So I can simply right click it, and now I can see everything and realize that I have almost 2 million cobble. Man, I should, uh, I should build something. Anyways, that's it for this updated networks tutorial, guys. I'm so glad. Uh, to have been able to help Steffi with testing us. I really appreciate his trust and faith in me to help guide him with this. Um, look for some new things coming in the future. I don't want to let all the cat out of the bag, but I know Steffi's working on a couple of other things to incorporate here, and uh, hopefully we'll see those soon. But as always, you guys know it, when you're playing Slime Fun, you got to go Boomer or you got to go home. And now we can. We'll see you later.